Okay, we are live. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. And what's this? Like, day three, day four in a row. This is quite a few consecutive days. I feel like I'm getting back into the swing of things, which is really good. Really enjoying all these shows. Now, anyway, let's get off and let's get into the subjects of tonight's show. And I guess we're going to start at the top. It's, it might be Manchester United versus Real Madrid for Jared Brandwit. Now, Brandwit is a key player that I think we really need to be going after in this summer. I think potential-wise, it's immense. I think the, the, the floor raising that he would bring in by himself at this point in time <clears throat> is undeniable. Like, it's a massive improvement now. But then, again, four or five years, you're looking at absolute potential megasaur of an of a center half and obviously that's going to attract a lot of interest Real Madrid will be out looking for center backs if it's something of a crisis these months again in that area obviously a lot of injuries to Rudiger to David Alaba to Militao they've been playing and Nacho and too many as their center halves in a lot of key matches and they've been doing well so I have no doubt in my mind they'll be after a center back in the summer and I have no doubt that they'll probably be looking for left backs which just so happen to be two of the areas we will be looking at but let's just hope that we can find um we, we can find a deal for the players we need to and hopefully Brantwaite's going to be one of them now I've got comments down below let me go through these real quick I've got Jarl saying uh if Real Madrid is in the mix we can kiss one <laughs> Brandwood, goodbye. On to the next. Man Letata says, uh, yo, Le Man is down there as well. And Lungan is down there as well, saying, yo, good to see you, man. Thanks very much uh, for joining on in there, guys. Much appreciate all the support on the sh uh, show this, this week. I can see we've got like 12 likes anyway before we've even really got going here. That's pretty good going. Look, guys, get voting on the poll. This will be a one of the main topics I want to go through tonight, and that is the role of the manager at United, potentially going to change, potentially going to be moving towards a head coach role, which I think is pretty exciting. I think that's kind of what we need to be doing, but I will discuss more in just a bit. But yeah, I mean, if we're going up against Real Madrid for a player, normally you would say, yeah, we're probably going to lose out to that player. If Real Madrid come looking for one of our players, historically, it's always been a case, yeah, we're going to lose that player. <clears throat> they are one of the very few clubs who would be seen as a step up from what United should be um, and, where, and where United want to be. But Real Madrid are um, definitely targeting Jared Brandwood. Personally, I, I would be surprised if this is the move they go to. I don't think he's the most attractive of name for Real Madrid as well. But I mean, at 21 years old, the level that he's at now, the level that he can get to is genuinely frightening. I'm hoping that we don't end up losing out on uh, Brandwood. And I think for the two centre-backs, now I'm talking two centre-backs tonight, we will get on to at Arabayo as well, uh, he's on the thumbnail. But I think they're absolutely essential signings, guys. You know, we struggle from set pieces. We struggle to defend corners, free kicks. We struggle with our high line. And we struggle sometimes playing out of the back. These guys answer a lot of those questions and a lot of those issues. We got Brand played at six foot five. We got uh, at Arabayo at six foot four. That's going to bring up the physical flooring of this team tenfold compared to what we would get from, say, Victor Lindelof or even from. Sandro Martinez, who I think is very good, but physicality isn't his strong suit. So I, th I think these are two players we really do need. I'm sure you guys have a lot of thoughts about them. I would like to know your thoughts down below, ideally as well. <clears throat> now, I have Bart says, Henderson looks good in red and white. He excelled at Sunderland, won it all. Liverpool is now helping Ajax finish the season strongly. Next chapter is a move to United. Maybe we'll go for Jordan Henderson. If, if Southgate becomes manager, yeah, I mean, we're going to get rid of Bruno, get rid of Mino, we'll bring... Jordan Henderson and Calvin Phillips and that'll be our midfield. That's that'll be the options we go with. Um I have Bart down there, Manu gets an odd before uh, Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones a real surprise. I, I'm not surprised because I think they're different types of players. You know, they, they are different types of players. Um Curtis Jones, yeah, he's probably more central than uh, Harvey Elliott, but Elliott's going up against, um, Harvey Elliott will be going up against Phil Foden and Bakao Saka for attacking spots, uh, James Madison, uh, Kobe Manu's going to be going up against Jordan Henderson, Calvin Phillips, I don't expect him to start for England at the Euros, if he goes at all, I think he is going to be there maybe as a backup to Rice, maybe that's what they will look at, but who knows, who knows, <clears throat> now I have comments down below as well, uh, Bart uh, Ten Hag is a very good coach, but on a human level, I'm unsure if he's a top manager. Likes to relinquish and um, control. Potts didn't like it. Mourinho was against it. Klopp is an exception. I mean, yeah, but Klopp handed off a lot of the transfer control for the majority of his tenureship at Liverpool to Michael Edwards. Um, 
Cheeky, it's, I think it's Cheeky or Cheeksy um, at, at City Control. He runs a race there as well. It isn't Pep doing all that there. And I do think it's perhaps a move to a more modernised uh, footballing institution. But I will get talking about that in just a minute as well. Uh, Chatsport is down there as well. Evening to you as well. Thank you. Big ups to Stephanie down there. Yeah, guys, 14 likes. Much appreciated. And Lungan says, I will quit watching football if... Southgate becomes the manager. I don't think he will. I think I think they'll look at it <clears throat> from the point of view that Gareth Southgate has had, I believe, one club job in his career, and that was at Middlesbrough, and that was maybe 10, 15 years ago. It wasn't a success. I think they might have got relegated with him as manager, and then he went to the FA where he worked as a director, and then obviously went into the under-21s team, and then he went into the senior management team. So, so yeah, I, I would be surprised about that. I think the Southgate links come from Dan Ashworth and uh, that connection because Ashworth was a director at the FA. I think it will come from Dave Brailsford as well. I think people are putting a lot of uh, points together in their head, but seemingly there's not too much talk anyway, guys, about Gareth Southgate seriously becoming the manager, which I'm glad about. I'm glad about it. I really am. Uh, can I just say as well, guys, big ups on those 14 likes. Much appreciated. Uh, so far, let's hope we can get up maybe to 30. I think we had 30 the other night as well. Uh, it would be good to hit it again. Um, but yeah, look, if we're going head-to-head -head with Real Madrid for a player, there's a good chance we lose out in said player. But I think Brandwitz may maybe a different one. A different one altogether, obviously. Look, he's got continental experience playing in... Um, for PSV Eindhoven in the Netherlands, yes. But I mean, I think his inclination will be to stay... In England, I think he'll end up at United if he does leave Everton. We do seem to be most strongly placed for that kind of deal. And it does it kind of feels like when John Stones went to City. I feel like that's maybe the type of signing you could be looking at with Brandwood. Um similar age, of course, whenever they left, going to from Everton to Manchester, obviously different player, different style of player, but certainly very high ceilings out there. Uh, Bart is down there. <clears throat> if I were advising Manu, I would tell him to relax and put his feet up. Uh, in, in the summer and maybe work on his physique. The league is brutal. A sluggish start will expose him. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's the key. I think that's the key here. And I think I think that's going to be um, the case of that there. Um, but I, I think if we're talking Manu, he's not really got much... Uh, very few players turned down the international uh, call, uh, unless you're Ben White. Like, unless you're Ben White, um, you know... Um, anyway, I've got some more comments. Uh, Latada is saying... Um, wasn't it shocking and unacceptable when we all heard Radcliffe wants to own Man United, but we all accept him. Same will happen with Southgate. We will be there. Don't worry. It won't happen. Like, we're, we're not going to bring him in. It's not, this isn't like the takeover where anybody could win it if they had the money and ultimately Radcliffe did win it. It's not going to be, um, you know, that kind of scenario here. I've no doubt that Southgate will be on a list somewhere. Make no mistake about it. He will be on a list, but so will 20 or 30 other potential managers. And we haven't even decided what we're going to do with the manager we currently have as well. Um, <clears throat> now, I have Jarl. Don't have to worry about Southgate. Sounds like he's staying with England if he wins. Maybe Ben Jacobs did an interview. He came out and said there's no chance for Southgate. He's on a list of maybe 200 names. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'd seen online as well. And that's kind of what I would surmise is the truth here. I feel like he probably is on a list, but it's probably about 200 names. It's no guarantee it's going to be Southgate. I mean, there'll be other managers on there. Probably Graham Potter's on there. Probably, um, I, 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 I don't, De Zerbi's on there, or perhaps like uh, Diago Mata or someone like that. Xabi Alonso is probably on that list. It doesn't mean we're going to get them. It just means that they're on a list. You know, Subvids is down there off topic, but could I recommend a United football app cheers oh no problem um sub um i don't really use too many apps and stuff if i want to like look into football or football players i think sofa score is pretty good like don't get me wrong their rating system is pretty basic and it does get misconstrued a lot and people read into it in the wrong kind of way but it is um a pretty good app in terms of keeping stats, keeping numbers, keeping figures from lots of different leagues as well. It's not just Premier League, it's literally nearly every league you can imagine. You know, they've got the details on there. So I would probably recommend them. If they want to hit me up for sponsorship, they, they can absolutely do that as well. <laughs> Steph says United won't pay the asking fee for a brand with. I mean, I would. I really think uh, I would, and I really hope that we do. I think logically to me, if, if we go out there... 
because I think we need two centre backs because you're looking at Varane going in June probably. You're looking at Lindelof maybe getting sold. Maguire could get sold. Johnny Evans is 36 years old. I think we need two centre backs. You know, if you bring in Adorabayo on a free transfer, which we're going to move on to as well here, um, <clears throat> you know, if you if you bring Adorabayo in on a free, that's going to save you 30, 40 million pounds on a centre back. Then you could go and buy a brand bid for 60, 65 million. That's going to be that position sorted, completely locked down for about 65 million, which you, you probably wouldn't get two players 35 to 40 million pounds as good as brand bid and at a bio anyway. So to me, that makes good sense. I don't know if I, I don't know if it's me thinking too logical. I don't know about it. Uh, Yarl says one percent chance Southgate becomes manager. Yeah, I mean, if he's one of two hundred, it's probably even less. To be fair, it's like not point five percent. If if we want to go into the numbers of it, um, no. Uh, Bart uh, Brandwood is good, but what's the price United could pay for his footballing services? Fifty, seventy five million. Maguire money plus inflation. Yeah, this, I mean, these are all considerations we have to go through. I think Everton might find themselves a in financial difficulty or b in potential relegation difficulty because another point deduction at this stage of four to six points could be absolutely catastrophic for them. Make no mistake about it. You know, their form has not been good since December. That They've really struggled to pick up the points. So I, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Um, <clears throat> what have I got? I think I'm going to miss comments somewhere. Have I? Let me double check, guys. Let me double check. Um, no, I think we're good. I think we are good. Uh, Jarl says, for the first time this year, we are hap um, We were happy. The media scrambled to try and make us unhappy with the bogus Southgate story. Maybe. Maybe they just don't want us to be happy. Who knows? Who knows? Um, Bart as well. Uh, I guarantee he's not in the Liverpool shortlist. That's the difference between the clubs. Also, United can't tempt Alonso. No, I, I don't think Alonso's coming to us. Like, but there are other managers out there as well. Um no, what have I got? Um, so that gives one is on Liverpool's <coughs> less one hundred percent. One percent there says Jarl. Uh, Steph is saying Brandwood has the mentality to cope with the pressure of the fee if he comes. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I do think that is a good point. I mean, hopefully he can. I think it's maybe not the same as when Harry Maguire was signed. You know, in the sense that um, you've seen players go for similar amounts to that there since. You know. I think Maguire came in with a lot of expectation because the only other centre-back really signed for that kind of money was Virgil van Dijk. But now you have, um, I think Koulibaly was signed for a lot of money. Uh, Fafana at uh, Chelsea signed for a lot of money, has been injured constantly and hasn't really played there. Um, so so I do feel like there's more of a track record. Uh, Gavardio went for £77 million last year to City. So I, I feel like maybe it's less of a massive... Um, spotlight going to be shown on it like no doubt it will be if, if it happens because it is us but I think just like from his own point of view he'll say okay it's not just Van Dijk but Maguire's gone for this money uh, Gavardio's gone for this money Fafana's gone for this money um, De Litt has gone for this kind of money uh, to, two dif to two different clubs I think as well I think he went for a lot of money uh, to um, Bayern Munich so so, so it, it's just about how we deal with that and how we, um, it, it comes down to mentality it'll be different for individual players of course uh, Dark Crow, um, are the players less interested in playing for national teams? I think priorities will always come into it, buddy. I really do. I think right now they'll be looking at it saying, right, okay, we have a run-in coming after this international break. We're playing friendly match Like England, for instance, are playing friendly matches against Brazil. And um, I'm not too sure the other one is. I think it might be like, is it like Slovenia or something? Is it? Um so yeah I mean they're friendly matches they're non-competitive if you're Bakao Saka who's pulled out this week or if you're um, Phil Foden sorry it, it's Belgium so if if you're if you're some of those cohorts of players you're probably sitting in a position now where like right okay I'm probably going to be in the England squad regardless of what happens between now and the end of the season I'm just going to keep myself fit so that I don't miss key league matches key Champions League matches FA Cup semi-finals that's going to come into thinking as well. You know, there's no point going out and getting injured in a friendly match when you might be guaranteed a spot anyway. Um, so, so yeah, so players like Saka might pull out. You might see Harry Kane pull out, depending on what Bayern Munich are going to do. Um, in the Bundesliga, probably not a lot, to be fair. But 
I wouldn't be surprised. I would. I wouldn't be surprised. You've seen Arsenal players pull out of the uh, international squads. I think Gabriel pulled out of the Brazil squad. It's just common sense, really. I think. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, Bart is on there. United needs to sign good characters and not potential prima donnas. Uh, structure the deal better. Keep them hungrier. Otherwise, the club will be known as Manchester Divided, not Manchester United. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've used that as a. Uh, as a thumbnail sometime in the past I, I'm confident that, that I would have came to that there. <laughs> um, judgment at some point as well um, but yeah I do agree I do agree with that there I think um, it, it's about the structure it's about the kind of players we're bringing in you want players with the right attitude the right mentalities I think you know Sancho will have burned I think Anthony will have burned the club so they're going to want to get this right and um, they're wa- going to want to try get this um, correct um, with 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 the rebuild anyway. Um, make, no, make no mistake about it. Um, Jarl is down there. Wouldn't it be perfect to beat Liverpool again? But we will not be able to prize us in the FA Cup this time. We need to do something different. We can win their chances to win the league. Yeah, we could do. Um, Steph is saying if Skyskate happens, it could be hilarious. Come on, FSG. You know you want to do it. It makes sense. Maybe. I mean, it, it could do. Like, imagine if Gareth Southgate went to Liverpool and won back-to-back league titles and a Champions League in the first year or two of being there. Like, I feel like we'd all be eating humble pie. I, I don't doubt that he's a good manager in terms of man management. I think his tactics are questionable. He probably should have won an international tournament for England. I, I think I think Euro, uh, the European Championships at Wembley is always going to be the big one. I mean, you go a goal up after, what, like five minutes at home in a in a championship final year, we should be going on to win that match. Um but but yeah, I mean I think track record would call that into question. I think you do look at it from the point of view that against the big teams they've struggled um and haven't got the results in the uh tournaments and tournament football in itself is very different um from club football as well. It's, it's completely completely different kettle of fish in the same way that we can't really trust international tournaments as an indication of player quality because the style and tempo of football is slower, it's not as intense. Um, you know, we've got players who maybe play together um, six, eight times a year in a non-tournament year. You, you, you know, that's, you, you can have center half partnerships who play with each other less than 10, 10 times in a calendar year. So that's certainly going to feed into the overall quality of it as well. Uh, Teddy's on there. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for joining in. Uh, chat's board as well. Good to see you, man. Uh, Letada is on there, stop being soft as well. Um, he's oh, he's home, Bart soft. I mean, like we don't need to be asking political questions down there, do we? I don't think we need to be doing that there. <laughs> it it's not a politics channel. I don't know. Um, we'll we'll keep that out. Um, chat support as well said, is he better than Ten Hag? Who are we talking about? Um, are we talking like uh, Southgate? Nah, I don't think so. I mean, I wouldn't go change Ten Hag for. For Southgate, and I've been critical of Ten Hag a lot this season. You know, I think one of the reasons I feel like I have been critical is that I know that there's more there, and for whatever reason, it's not coming out. If if it was David Moyes, for instance, you'd be kind of feeling sorry for him at this point, saying, "Yeah, look, I think this guy's just so out of his depth." I think the problem is with Ten Hag is that we know he's a good coach, and we he can be a good coach. He's just making really odd mistakes and decisions with the team and the lineup and the tactics every week that you're kind of saying, what are you doing, Eric? Like, are we not going to fix these problems? I don't know. Um, it's, It'll be an interesting one anyway. As Yeah, guys, we'll, we'll keep the personal questions out of the... Um, out of the chat as well like we'll just we'll we'll just talk football or we'll talk, we'll talk, keep it casual like i don't mind like if you guys want to talk about your weekend plans or like dinner or food whatever like uh, far away well. um i guess we'll move on um because we have started to talk about southgate we'll talk now about something else that does seem to be cropping up and that is an interesting story coming in from chris whaler of the daily mail he was basically saying the ten hag has been told um that he will have a reduction in terms of his overall control and role within the club. He won't be a manager per se, but he will be a coach. I think this is a way forward. I do. And I know that, you know, we want the manager to have a lot of say and the manager should have a lot of say. But I think that increasingly not with player power at the club, they're lasting longer than managers. And the way I think you get around that and the way I think you manage, um, I, I think 
And I, I think the way you get around that there is by going with the club route. Whilst, whilst managers can come and go and players can stop playing for the manager, the club's ultimately going to be there longer than the player as well. So I think this is probably the smart way to get around that there. And I think most modern clubs are following this way. Uh, Eddie has a lot of power over um, Arsenal, even that Arteta doesn't have. You know, we don't need a manager to be making all the transfer calls. We don't need a manager to have to deal with player contracts and contract issues and playing time issues or players having complaints or dramas off the pitch. I think Eric Ten Hag would be in a much better position, personally, if, uh, and I mean, if he was in that, um, if he was in that boat that you find with Pep Guardiola, you find with uh, Mikel Arteta, yeah, they'll have influence on a say behind the scenes. But if Eric Ten Hag was allowed to focus on his job, would you have a better United team? Would Would you have a a manager solely def- focused on coaching and trying to get? The most out of um, the team on the pitch because ultimately you know that is his job that that, that is what he is employed to do so it kind of makes sense to me anyway um i'm sure people have different thoughts about it i think it all depends on the quality of people you have behind the scenes I, i've quite a bit of faith in any of us at the minute that they'll appoint the right people that we seem to be going down that path but we're not there yet obviously and um it will be interesting to see anyway um you is saying uh, the next few games are important. If we go to Brentford and lose, that cannot happen. Chelsea can be a hard one. And of course, Liverpool, we can end up with one point or nine points. I think we beat Brentford, to be honest. I think their form's really stuttering. I think we at least get a point at Sanford Bridge. I think Liverpool at home is questionable. I think we could draw that match. If I had to predict right now, I think five points. I I, I think that's realistic. Beat Brentford and get a result away at Stamford a way at Stamford Bridge and a result at home against Liverpool would be pretty good going. And, and that's most of our difficult matches between now and the end of the season done. Obviously, we still have to play Arsenal. Obviously, we still have to play, um, I think, Brighton as well. That, that That's not an easy match either. But I, I, th- I've, I think that'll be most of the big matches done at that point. Yes, yeah, Seth, we're up to 19 likes as well, guys. Can we get up to 20? I think we're really close. Um. And keep voting on the poll if you haven't already. You can see there's more votes than there is likes, but I think there's only 17 people in here as well. So I'm pretty sure everyone has dropped a like anyway. Um, but yeah, so the change in rules is an interesting one. Um, and it does seem to be a bit of a sticking point. It does seem to be an issue that has been flagged up with Ten Hag before. It's kind of like he's had all this control and he's had all this set to club and now it's been kind of took away from him or, you know, that that can rub someone up the wrong way as well. I don't think it's a case of any of saying, look, you're not competent enough to run these things. But, you know, the track record of successes with transfers that he's had a big say on, you know, that's, um, that's been an interesting one. Uh, Sir Jim Radcliffe is coming from Mike McGrath as well. Uh, Sir Jim Radcliffe wants a head coach rather than the all-powerful manager at Manchester United, regardless of Ten Hag's future. I think I, I think just as a whole, this is a good idea. And the reason why I say that is because we're tr- we've are we been trying for 10 years to replicate Sir Alex Ferguson, to try catch lightning in a bottle again. I, I don't think you can do that. Like, I don't think this is an easy job to do. And I think if you can split it between different people, you have someone looking at player um, contracts, you have someone looking at the, the uh, recruitment stuff, you have another guy looking um, and overseeing the academy development, and then you have another technical director maybe linking in with the players, it's kind of like, almost like an impromptu HR type person. I think that makes a lot more sense, because Eric Ten Hag, you, what his job is going to come down to is on the pitch. It, he, he cannot, he cannot have had full focus at all times in that job. There, there's no there's no doubt about it. Like whenever he's dealing with Mason Greenwood situations, Ronaldo situations, Maguire, Rashford, Anthony, you know, there's been problems there as well. Um there's stuff with contracts as well have definitely fed into it, the takeover as a whole. The manager's job should be to manage the team, to focus on the coaching and get results on the pitch. It shouldn't be to babysit. It shouldn't be to do all these other things. So breaking it up to me it makes a lot of sense. And then it's just like you're solely judging the manager based upon what he's doing on the pitch, where the team is, how they're playing. I think it's a smarter way to run things as well. I don't know. If you guys have different thoughts, let me know down below. Anyway, uh, Bourne is down there. Uh, did they not call him Sir Alex for nothing? Pika said it. Um, United was in the palm of his hands. Yeah, it was. It, it's very much a case of that. Um, it's it's very much a case in that. I think I think this might be one of the big decisions and the big determinations when it comes to what happens to Eric Ten Hag 
um, at Manchester United. If he doesn't accept that role reduction or that change in job description, maybe, I think I think then that could be a real big issue. I think that could be a bigger issue than perhaps if we have a disappointing end of the season. I think Radcliffe and Ineos have come in. They want what they're calling best in class. That's with our directors, our recruiters, our sporting directors. They don't want to bring these people in to not give them the power to really change things behind the scenes at the top level. So I think it's really important that we do that. Um, Steph is down there. We've got 20 likes. Thanks very much uh, as well, guys, for all the likes. Much appreciated. Let's see if we can get up to 30 by the end of the stream. We're only like 20 minutes in as well. Uh, Bart says, Ten Hag's contract expires at the end of the next season. So what are, um, what are my expectations for next season until December? It's a good question. I think it depends on what happens between the, now and the end of the season with Eric Ten Hag. Um, do, do we end up letting him go? Do we have a, a mutual um, termination if he, if he doesn't accept the reduction in role or if he doesn't accept, you know, other people having a set. I'm, I'm not too sure. I think Eric Ten Hag will be happy enough to work with him. I think he should be. At Ajax, when he was most successful, he had Edmund van der Sar as his CEO. He had Mark Overmars as director of football, and they worked together on that team. And those guys had a lot of say in what Ajax were doing. And really, it wasn't since Overmars left the club and Eric Ten Hag left the club and Edmund van der Sar subsequently left the club that Everton, sorry, that Ajax had found themselves in a real bad position as well. Um, now, I have Rajat uh, would get Ignacio on uh, Tiribu. I mean, I like Ignacio. I think he's a really good player. I think he covers that left-back spot as well. That could be a selling point. But I think he's too similar to Martinez, to be honest. But I'm not too sure. Um, Rajat, a uh, different generation coach. Difficult to find one like him. Is it weird to have two left-footed centre-backs if we play a back three? Not really. I mean, nobody would say anything... If you're playing through at the back and we had two right footers, they wouldn't really say anything. I think ideally you would like your central uh, centre half to be kind of like in that sweeping role. You would like him to be comfortable with both feet. I think that just gives you more of like more ability to play the ball out. But it, it, it all depends. It does all depend. Uh, Bart says modern day manager needs to deliver after two seasons in charge. What differs from club to club is the expectations. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think you know, just on a basic level, you can say that if the time frame is two seasons to deliver, what that deliverance is is going to be different on a club to club basis. At United, if we brought a manager in, it might be that in two seasons' time we're competing for uh, Premier League titles. If um, if Newcastle brought a, a new manager in, the expectation might be in two years that they're a Champions League club every season. If Brentford brought a new coach in or Everton brought a new coach in, it might be in two seasons that they're firmly established in the middle of the table and they're starting to look upwards instead of downwards. I'm not too sure though. Um I'm not I'm I'm not too sure. Um Jarl is down there, it'll be up to Ten Hag if he stays or goes. Been saying for a while now, a new contract he gets converted to coach or he walks. Yeah, I think so. I, I think I think that could come down to it. I do. I think the club will be wary of it. It's like it would suit us better if Ten Hag wasn't going to accept the role reduction that he goes as well. See if the club paying him off anyway. But I'm not. I'm not too sure. Uh, Yarl says any of hits the Ten Hag video par, so we'll be checking away, and he will not pick another player. But I think Ten Hag's ability and his power has gone beyond a video. I think it has been the overall setting of transfer policy, which is a much bigger thing. Um, if a manager really doesn't want a player, the club won't sell, won't sign them. You were not. Uh, most clubs won't do that. There, it's the same. It it go it, it swings both ways because Pep Guardiola at City wanted Harry Maguire. He wanted Fred, for instance. You know, the club didn't want those signings. They didn't get him. Like that's that's what it came down to. Uh, Carpi is down there. Brentwood and Tabita will definitely be um at United right and left back, uh, right and left sided centre backs. I mean, yeah, that I could absolutely see it. I think Adarabai was a much sensibler signing because 26 years old, playing in uh, Fulham, Premier League proven, free transfer, knows Manchester, used to live there, played for City, really good in the ball, really physical, really quick. I think he ticks so many boxes and it, it just allows you to spend money in other places. And I think the more areas we can hit in this summer transfer window, the better we're going to be next season. 
And then if we're good next season, you finish Champions League. Then season two of this Ineos regime, you can spend even more money. And that's just going to keep rolling into it. I'm not too sure, though. I think I could be the smart guy to go for it. Um, Rosette, will Ten Hag still have the veto power set? I, I think he probably will. I think all clubs have a degree of it. Like, the manager does get consulted. It kind of The way it kind of works is... The manager comes in on the first 10% and the last 10% of a signing. So a manager will go, Eric Ten Hag will go, right, okay, Dan Ashworth, um, whoever's going to be, uh, Jason Wilcox, w w whatever. I want a midfielder who's capable of doing a lot of running work, good in possession, winning a lot of tackles, someone who's going to bring a lot of intensity to the game and bring up our physical flooring, okay? So then what they would do would go to, you said, the recruitment people. They would go to the scouts and say, look, we want manager wants a player to the X, Y, and Z. We agree with this. Um, so who have we got in the system? And then they would go in and they would say, look, maybe Amadeo Onana, maybe uh, Morten Schulman, maybe Yao Gomez. Uh, the, these are players who would all fit this here. here. Here's a short list of players who the stats and the data given that we think could be really good for this position. And then they would go back and they would say, okay, Eric, um, look, we've got five players here. What do you think? We were thinking about going for um, Amadeo Onana first because Everton are likely going to face a point deduction. They could get relegated and they've got financial difficulties. It's maybe the easiest deal to get done. And it answers all the questions. If Ten Hag goes, no, I, I don't want him. I really want Yao Gomez. Then the club will go and think about it. He will be consulted. He will. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> uh, Carpy says Ten Hag has delivered what he can under the circumstances. The players are not good enough. The injuries, he will get it right and the players and backroom staff. I mean, I hope so. I, I I think it's a lot easier for us if Ten Hag does turn it around. It means that we're not going looking for yet another manager. And I, I would say this across the board. Like, I know a lot of us have our own thoughts on Marcus Rashford or Bruno Fernandes, Harry Maguire, McTominay. If these players start to play really well and, and show out world-class form, if the manager starts to win and matches week in week out that's a lot easier for us it's a lot better for us so th they're always going to have our support in that sense uh bath time is down there and <laughs> she had stefan man i'm the only guy on this <laughs> this is a one-man band channel anyway it's always me on here um but it is good to see you buddy thanks for joining in anyway um yarl says Tadebo, does he want united uh, last i heard he wasn't keen on a move um i, I don't know like i i don't know um I feel like it's probably the logical place to start for any of us. I feel like they will have asked or they will ask around their own players at Nice um, if there's any who could be good. But I don't know. Like, I think I think we can go elsewhere other than Tadebo. I think he's good, but I don't think he's the be-all and end-all of centre-backs. I really don't. Um, <clears throat> what have I got? Uh, Letara Leach has proven to be a liability with his injuries. Just questions about... Yeah, I, th I think injuries are the thing. I think if he has another serious injury, I think then you really start to ask questions. I think he's still absolutely top notch. Like, and I think this most recent injury came completely accidental. It wasn't related to his previous injury. Let's just hope that the way he plays the game isn't going to lead to excessive injuries anyway, because that can happen and that would be a concern. But I don't know. I I I don't know. Um. Anyway, I've got questions coming in. Um. Well, who's out there? Rizad, uh works well in the structure at Ajax, though it is Eredivisie. Well, yeah, I mean, it swings both ways. Like, um, Rizad also says, Ignacio is great. He's likely to he's left-footed. Uh, versatile can play left-back and a lot more calm. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be too hard to be a lot more calm than uh, Leitzio Martinez. Um, now, I have... Natalia says, Stefan is putting shifts. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we've actually done quite a lot of... Um, streams and stuff this week it's been good though I, I have enjoyed it and like the numbers are a lot better this week which is good you know that's what we always want to see um what have i got jarl is saying as well i think it's actually from fabrizio i heard in an interview over at united stand uh, bar says my only issue with ten hag is that his tactics so far have been personnel based these key players play almost every match in a short space and they get injured also the in-game management is an issue yeah it absolutely is like uh, i i think I think it's an interesting kind of duality and dichotomy where you have Eric Ten Hag making tactical decisions based upon the personnel that are causing a lot of problems. But at the same time, um, you know, the, the personnel are causing the tactics, but the tactics are wrong because of the personnel. So I don't think they can actually improve whilst we have this personnel in the first place. So if you want to stick with Ten Hag, you might not see his best 
um, football, or we might not see the structure that he's really trying to go for, no matter who is fit in the squad. You know, we could have every single player fit. Um, <clears throat> we could have every single player fit in the squad, and we still don't have the personnel to carry this out. So, so that's my thoughts. Anyway, um, let me see. Um, Sim is down there. Latata, his big brother. Good to see Sim as well. Thanks for joining in, buddy. Um, now, what if I got bath time? I'd be exploring selling Martinez. On the whole, it's been great, but I'm still not convinced we can win a league with him at centre back, regardless of injuries. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, th I think we, I would be keeping him. Like, I absolutely would be keeping him. Um, you know, we need a squad anyway. Like, even if he regresses that he isn't the starter every week, um, it all depends. Like, against teams where you're going to be more in possession, I can absolutely see the benefit of having him. Um, you know, I really can like the quality on the ball from deep playing those line breaking passes into the midfield, into the forward line. Very, it's an invaluable skill. But against teams you're going to be out of possession, you, know, you could see him, um, dr drop to the bench or whatever. Like, even the, like you could even play probably a back three and he could be pretty good in that kind of system. I don't know though, a, a lot of fifth spots and maybes anyway. Um, What have we got? Carpy's on there. Funniest thing I've heard this year. Did I miss something? Oh, it's it's, it's Bath time. No, Bath time's a United fan. Um, he's missed over forty games and has three serious injuries in a year. Yeah, I mean that's it's it's always going to be a concern. Like it, it it's all about that there. Um, it, it's it's about availability. It's one of the most important skills a player can bring uh, to their game is just being available. And a lot of the time, people complain about Harry Maguire or even Scott McTominay playing so regularly but they're always available same goes for Bruno Bruno is never injured he's always available and the, that earns the manager's trust it's not just that a, a manager might not be able to trust a player because of their performances it's that he might not be able to trust a player because he can't get them on the pitch enough to build relationships and relationships are key on the pitch as well they are um, what have I got um, I think I've missed something there Carpe, no United fan with SL Martinez. Um, not everything is Heller keep there is a loan, says Rashad. <laughs> As Sim is saying, I was Ten Hag out, um, but now Southgate, I don't think so. Uh, look, I don't think it's going to be Southgate, buddy. I, I really don't. I think I think we might be safe from Gareth Southgate. Um, according to other like journalists and people who might be in the know, you know they're kind of saying Southgate is the name they're considering but there's also about 200 names on the list and he's just one of many. So it's not like we've walked in and we're like right we need a manager who do we get and everyone has unanimously said uh gareth southgate so i i don't i don't think that's going to be the case thankfully so so i think that's i think that's good that's probably a a, a relief for many in the chat um let me see uh bart is saying the worst thing we can do right now is making garnacho and mino um surefire starters at this rate they will burn out in their third season, learn from City. Yeah, I think you've got to manage these players. I think you look at Barcelona, you look at what's happened with Gavi, you look at what's happened with Pedri, um, you look around and see how Pep has managed Foden's minutes at City. I think that's what we need. You would like to say that there. I think Foden played something like 16,000 minutes or something um, before the age of 21, which is still quite a bit of football. And then I think when you compare it to Gavi or Pedri, it's like 20,000, 22,000. Rooney was like 26, 27,000 before the age of 21. You know, and he was done really early. So it's important that you do manage these young players. It is um, very important. Steph says, I hope I'm wrong, but I pray uh, Alicia doesn't become injury prone like Luke Shaw. Big ups for 26 likes as well. Yes, guys, much appreciated. Uh, Bart says, City helped the likes of Stones, Foden and Alvarez find their feet. Do the same with Hoyland and Manu. Ali managed Greenwood well. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, And even last year, there was a lot more of a plan with Garnacho. He didn't really start every single match. More often than not, he was used as an impact sub. Um, he, Even in the FA Cup final, though, he was coming off the bench with 20 minutes left. I think he's ready for more than 20 minutes off the bench. I think he can start matches. I just don't think he should be going on to his 27th consecutive uh, start in all competitions against Brentford and I feel like that's what's going to happen and I think Manu's going for his 15th consecutive Premier League start as well so you know that's a lot of football 
in a lo- in a very short period of time, and I hope that they can recover from that. And I hope we can manage that situation better as well. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Uh, what have we got? Does that doubt any of us are dumb enough to look at Southgate? I mean, I hope not. Um, bath time. It's brilliant having players like Mount Shaw Martinez. Uh, but their availability means I think we need to offload them. Obviously, Mount and Martinez need to show um, they're not crocs, but Shaw. Yeah, I mean, Shaw, Shaw's got more of a track record for this. I think Martinez could come back and be pretty injury f- fit. I, I'm not too sure if Mount's injury history was at Chelsea, um, but I think I think it'd be all right. Like, I, I have less concern about him. Chatsport said Bruno looked good for... Portugal yesterday, yeah, he scored and got an assist. I'm actually glad about that because now he's got a, an extended period of time off. He's off now until the Brentford match. He won't play until then, which is good. So that's probably the most amount of, of a break Bruno's had since I don't even know um, the last summer. So, he, yeah, I mean, we might get a brand new Bruno against Brentford. Um, Matata, um, is burning out young players for instant success ethical? I don't. I mean, I don't like it. Like, I really don't. I. I really don't. Barcelona are doing the same thing right now. They're doing it with this. I think it's like Lamine Lamine Ural or something. Um, obviously very talented sixteen year old, but um, he's played so much football this season. Um, what what do you call this kid? Uh. Lamin Yamal, yeah. I mean, he's played so much football this season and he's only, he's only 16 years old. Like, um, he he only turned 16 in July as well. So, like, he's going to play an entire first-team season at the age of 16. And the way Barcelona's finances are going to go, that he's going to end up being first choice next season again. You know, you have to manage it. I do think you have to manage it. Um Bath time, I saw him come on in Terry's film last year, got the winner, but I also saw Dan James take Martinez to the cleaners. <laughs> uh, what have I got as well? Um, Rajat, um, may as well burn out McTominay, but still no one deserves to burn out. No, no one deserves to burn out. Uh, bath time, you see all the show injuries um, on Call of Duty's games, correlation. Maybe, maybe that's the thing. Like, I, I know there's always that correlation between Neymar injuries and like his sister's birthday. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think that was definitely a thing at one point. Uh, Rashad said no Cristiano playing. No, I think he's actually injured as well. Uh, why aren't we looking at Rafa Liao, says Rashad. I think we're not looking at Liao because he's a lot of money. And I think he's, he went to something like 15, 20 matches without scoring a goal this year. I, I mean, Marcus Rashford would be um, publicly... Um, mocked uh, and shamed in, in, in Manchester for doing such a thing. So I don't know. I don't know, like, I feel like Rafa Liao would be equally as frustrating. There's a, there's a lot of players like that who, because we don't see them every week, we, we hold them in a very high regard, but their own, their own fans might even be pretty annoyed about it. Uh, Carpies on there, people say burnt out young players, but there is now the Euros coming up where they'll play, playing then a whole day then pre-season, so the point is, yeah, I mean, but, but it goes beyond that. Like, we had a lot of injuries at the start of the season and a lot of injuries at even on preseason as well. And that was because we played like 65 matches last year and we used the core squad of about 15, 16 players. Um, I know that just because we get two weeks off doesn't mean these players are going to be ready to go again for it. it it's it's just important that you, that you do manage it like you do because a player is always fit until he's injured um, on paper anyway. But but there's you can prevent it. It can be prevented if anyway. Uh, Bart says Pedri has never been the same since he played seventy games during his debut season. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just managing because these they're literal. Like some of these players are literal kids. Like they are literal um, children. Um, that that that's the easiest way to put it. Like they are literally children. Like so so they gotta they gotta um, they gotta be managed. Like. Um, Daniel Sturridge, of all people, is done. There. No, it isn't Daniel Sturridge. It's Daniel S- Sturridge. Apologies. I, I thought it, I thought it was the former Liverpool and England player in the chat. <laughs> um, thoughts on the United Stand? Look, I don't mind the United Stand. Um, I really don't watch a lot of fan channel stuff myself. I just haven't got time between this and work and everything else I got going on. 
But I mean, yeah, I'd listen to United Stand if I was in the car or I would put Paddock on or People's TV. There's so many fan channels out there as well. A lot of them. Steph is down there. A result of poll. Very good question. You haven't checked the poll out. Um, What have we got? 42% said that yes, it is a good thing to change Um, <clears throat> from manager to coach. Uh, 39 said no and 19%. Uh, sorry, 39% said unsure and 19% said no. Bath Time said no players deserve testimonials anymore, but if they give money to charity, I'm all for it. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Um, are we talking about a decade at Old Trafford? Yeah. I mean, I don't matter charity match. It, it, it's uh, it's fine. Um, Bart said United may have signed him, but Conte is in charge. I don't think he'll let him go. Um, Conte will go to Milan. Says Rajat Mata will go to them. I, th I think... I think they're pretty. I think I think they got a manager sorted. Um, AC Milan. Who was going to be their next manager? I, I thought they had a manager sorted after Pioli. Um, I don't think it's going to be Conte. Is it? No, actually, what well, was Daily Mail said Conte apparently agrees to, but that was that's back in February, March. There hasn't really been any talk about it since then. Hey guys, big ups on twenty six likes. Let's see if we can go up. Uh, to 30 but again like 26 likes is so good when we have 100 views like on the stream so that's kind of, that's really good um appreciate all the support i really do um what have i got bath time everything else stefan is merely the one involves boulders get three character creation i haven't even started to play it man i haven't even got it loaded up yet um reset uh flying pig yeah i think i've seen a little bit of flying pig i haven't really watched a lot like um I used to watch more, um, to to be honest. But then again, it's kind of like you, I would watch those, like, so I didn't have to go through all the news and read through all the news and all the views and opinions and you know analyze stuff like that there. But then again, I'm kind of doing it now for my own channel, so it's like I, I don't really feel the need for it as much. Uh, Carpy says, "Surprise, Conte hasn't been linked to United uh, like everyone else likes to. It'll probably happen at some point. It, it will happen at some point if we if we make a manager change." It'll be Conte, it will be uh, Zinedine Zidane, probably. I, I think we've already had Zidane, uh, those links and rumours. Um, Southgate, I get that's the current one at the minute, but there will be more. There always is more. Um, <clears throat> Bath Time says the GOAT of United YouTube is G-Wolf. I haven't met G-Wolf. I, I, look, I was on Rich's channel last night and... Um, Obviously, I, th I think G. Wolf had been on a couple of days before, <laughs> dressed up in clown makeup uh, because of um, a bet he made about the United City match um, with someone in the chat. So <laughs> it's it's a fun one. Uh, Jarl, sad news about Baldur's Gate 3 not letting, not getting an add-on or ex uh, expansions. Later on, are done with D&D &D and now they're off to try new adventures. Is that true? Um Steph says everyone is linked to United. Yeah, I mean, it's only a matter of time before I get linked or you guys get linked. Uh, will we get Oshimahen at 90 million? No, we won't. We won't. Um, we're not going to spend 90 million on a striker. We're not spending more than 50 million on a striker this summer because I think Hoyland's going to be first choice and I think we go get a more experienced option. Uh, Bart says the athletic podcast and individual Premier League is really for more general overview. They're totally football. Um, Football Weekly good. I like John Shin streams too. Yeah, yeah, I like John Shin stuff. He, he's a positive guy anyway. Uh, Leman says, I have to be more animated when we score. Can see it bring out all that fan passion. And honestly, it's it's like, I know I sit and like, um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk on here for like an hour or do watch alongs for like an hour or two hours. Like, I'm actually like a, a quite an introverted, introverted person in real life as well. Like, so I don't really jump about and get too excited. I, I'm sure if I go back and go through the streams and stuff there's some good links and some good clips and stuff um I, i'm sure there'll be some good ones uh from the liverpool match last week um but yeah i i am a little bit more reserved on it anyway um i don't know it's one of those things it's like i know we see like other fan channels out there not just united but just in general and they'll jump about and scream and get on um uh, like that's just not really me like that makes sense like i'm not gonna go s slamming my desk like it took me ages to build this um, desk uh, for, for my IKEA. I'm not going to go breaking it. <laughs> I'm not going to go breaking it because United has uh, considered an equaliser to Brentford or something. I don't know. Um, Bart says, what happened to Jonathan David? Um, what happened? Um, 
what happened interest cooled yeah interest kind of cooled down jonathan david he, when he went to Lille initially it was seen as a really good move um you know that i think he he went that season they won the league i think it was like jonathan david and burak yilmaz up top uh, for for Lille, and it was good like um it, i think i think it's just because Lille have cooled as a team he's scoring maybe on average 13 15 kind of goals and Lagoon, it's okay. Like I, I just, I just don't think he's quite as good or quite as highly thought about. Um, Rosette said, "What is with is Stephen Housen that bad that he gets criticised heavily?" I don't really know what. Um, I don't really know what Housen gets uh, criticised for. I know it was something about fan tours or something like a load of years ago, but like I think Housen's content's it, it's pretty good. Like I mean, I don't, I don't really have any issue with him. Um, myself, like I, I did. <laughs> I don't know, like I did like a video a while back, um, doing like five things that like, we learned and like somebody popped up in, in the comments and I was trying to copy Stephen Housen, but I never really bothered too much about it. I was just like, it is what it is. Like you sometimes get stupid comments. Um was that watch Rio's five podcasts as well? I don't really watch too much of um Rio Ferdinand's five podcasts and the reason is like I'm sure you guys all remember last year, Rio Ferdinand did a video on Twitter when he got off the tree and saying that um, United were going to get sold to Sheikh Yassin. We had heard exclusive news and we didn't hear anything either. Um, let me see. Steph says, my watch-alongs are legendary. I mean, I like to think that they're fun. Like, because I know, I know people do watch them, like, obviously watch them for a good while. And I enjoy doing them. Like, so that's how I do it. Um, Chatsport, it's a good channel. What what are we talking about? Uh, what channel is that, buddy? Big ups to those 28 likes as well, guys. Much appreciated as always. Uh, Carpe Southgate, the idiot, now in the press conference, getting asked about United links. Is he actually? Uh, is Shed Charles the best United youngster of his generation? No, sorry, the best Northern Ireland youngster. No, I, I don't think so. Um, I think I think Galbraith will be a big talent. Um, for United, sorry, for Northern Ireland when he gets, um, when he, when he starts to get into the squad on a more regular basis. It's a very small pool of players that there there is to pick from, like for Northern Ireland in general. So. I mean, yeah, I think Gilbreth will be up there. Uh, Connor Bradley, if he depend, if he wants to play for here or not, I guess will be another one. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, let me see. Southgate talking about press conference links. I'll look out for that one. Um, who are we talking about? The man said he he seems to be a bit of a weirdo. Stay away from him. Am I missing something? Am I missing something? I don't know. Uh, I don't think I missed something. Oh, Chatsport said Gibbs White as well. Yeah, I mean, I I think he's good. I, I like Gibbs White. He does give the ball away a lot. And people who complain about Bruno giving the ball away while looking for other players like uh, Gibbs White or even like James Madison, they give the ball away a lot as well. Pip, it, it's it's one of those. It's just people tend to dig into things um, so much when it's, when it's her own player. Um and because we watch more casually other players, you know, there's always that kind of expectation. Um, Bath Time says, I have family that support United. Yeah, my whole family supports United, except for my granda. My, my granda supports Arsenal, but he used to live over in London, so if, I'll, I'll, I'll cut him some slack on that there one. Uh, but no, my dad, my mom, uh, my uncles, my cousins, all United supporters. Um, Bart says, I like this interview with Kevin Prince Boateng. He's had quite a career across some big clubs. Yeah, um, Botang's an interesting character in terms of this um he's played with. Rosette said Manu eight um bath time. I'm surprised when I see people have brothers and fathers that support different teams to them. How does that happen? I don't know how it happens, like either. I think you do get glory hunting supporters to an extent. Like I know a guy you support support um he used to support Chelsea. His dad was always a Man City fan, like I guess a legacy fan you would call at City. And then um, when City got good, he went from Chelsea to supporting. Um, he he went from supporting Chelsea to City. Um, you all Norway. We all like to fire our manager, but he can't get a tune out of the Norwegians. If he tried, he is five times worse than Southgate. The man, um, you're just missing out on the stream. Um, Banters, BTW senior citizens. What? Jasper said 50 million for Gibbs White. Not, not if they get relegated. Uh, would I take uh, Gangalo Ramos and Dembele if Rashford goes? No, nah, I, I, I like Gangalo Ramos. I liked him last season. I think he was overpriced when he went to PSG. Um, and I feel like he's just struggled to live up to the hype, really, so far. Um, I'm not going to take Dembele. He's just made a glass, to be honest. Guys, pick up some 30 likes as well. Um, <clears throat> what have I got? Uh, Bart. 
I've seen people from the Midlands and members support rival clubs like West Brom. Yeah, I've seen that, to be fair. Uh, Bath them is Rangers United the Northern Irish El Clasico. No, um, we, we actually have um, several obsessions in, in this country. So United Liverpool will be a big one in England. And then there's a subsection of people here who will be really pro-Celtic or Rangers. And then within uh, Northern Ireland itself, we have a thing, a very special event, we call it El Belfast Tico, and it's between Linfield and Glen Torin. Very hated uh, rivalry once. Actually, I was at uh, a talk of the Devils Live and ended up talking to Andy Mitten after, and he was saying that he um, really wants to get over for an El Belfast Tico, and I said, like, go for it. And then <laughs> our mates were saying the same thing. Um, I missed a comment on Ten Hag and McTominay. Uh, Rizal, what was that? But Sorry, Liman, what? comment that I miss um, oh should Ten Hag be thankful to McTominay for saving his job he probably has to be fair I'm sure he probably is that's probably why he plays him as well he would like to look at it and go this is a guy I can trust like um, was that said any other teams want Tushin Adarabayo I think he's linked to Spurs and Chelsea as well um, you all said imagine if Rashford found himself in PSG at least they would be the guy to take his place maybe not on the left but yeah um, but um, Again, is it uh, Jean Dahl Tomlinson, that old useless Newcastle striker? Um, I met an American once called Glenn Torrin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair <enough about> time. <laughs> Who'll be the first American soccer coach to truly make it here in the Premier League or Championship? Never thought that I would see an Aussie coach do well in the Premier League. Yeah, I think I'll see it. I think I'll see it. Um, you, you could have seen it with um, Jesse Marsh, I guess, if if things were better at Leeds, but I don't think it really worked out fully for him there. I, I don't know. I mean, I remember t even 10 years ago, because it was unthinkable. If anybody remembers how uh, incompetent uh, Bob Bradley seemed at Swansea, you never thought it could get to that level. But it, it's kind of heading in that way now, it is. Um, Stel Sobakan is the Norwegian manager. Um, was that uh, getting a free deal? So probably not complaining. No, I would take him, absolutely. Uh, Carpy says at least he'll be so good for United. Yeah, I think he's brilliant. Um, he came from the MC Academy. Yeah, Adarabato did. Uh, Cole Palmer looks a good talent. He's mentally strong. I read uh, that he's had a hand in 40% of Chelsea's goals. Yeah, I mean, Cole Palmer's been exceptional. And it's funny because he was kind of an unnecessary seal by City. They didn't really need to sell him, but they just did. Uh, Sim said, I was at the game, uh, the Rangers friendly in 1973. They brought down... 20, 30,000 fans, it was a war zone, the most frightening game I've ever been to. Yeah, I wonder if the pre-season match is going to be similar in Edinburgh. I think we're playing at Murrayfield in July, so I don't know what that's going to be like. Uh, as Steph says, big ups on the 30 likes as well. Uh, Lehmann says Marsh will go to Chelsea. I, I feel like they're just going to take to Zerbi. They're just obsessed with everything Brighton at the minute. Um, Uh, Palmer was a bargain, said Chasport. Yeah, he probably was. Uh, Yarl says, no, he was not a Spurs. He was at Wimbledon in 97, 98. Do you guys have some memory on that? <laughs> like, we really do. Um, look, guys, I think we're going to leave the stream here. Uh, that's just about an hour, so thanks so much for 30 likes. It's a little bit quieter tonight, but I do really appreciate it anyway. Uh, as Carpy says, oh, sorry, uh, Jewsbury Hall. Yes, I'll quickly touch on that. I think he's a good player. I think £40 million... Pounds it's not he's not the type of player we need. I don't think he addresses the profiling issues we have in midfield. It's one of those if Leicester get hit with a points deduction in the championship and don't go up as is potentially being talked about, um, then maybe for twenty five million pounds seems to be his release clause. I could get that, but just not for that much to be honest. To be honest, um, look guys, I think that I think that's um, I think that's all we got time for tonight. But thanks so much for joining in. Really do appreciate it, and I will catch everyone again tomorrow. Uh, probably be live a little bit earlier tomorrow, maybe about five or half five. So make sure to keep an eye out for that there one. And I'll catch everyone then.